Hi, everybody. Hopefully you attended our Teams class meeting, and we should have covered this in our Teams class meeting, but we talked about this quote by Confucius. It says, lead the people by laws and regulate them by punishment, and the people will simply try to keep out of jail, but will have no sense of shame. Lead the people by virtue, and they will have a sense of shame, and moreover will become good. So we talked about these two questions in association with that quote. How does Confucius believe people should be led and why does he believe that it is the best way? So we talked about basically how he believes that relying on harsh punishment and military power to govern is not the best way to govern because people aren't becoming good. They're just doing things out of fear. So we are going to talk today on um, thinker Confucius. Now it should be noted that um, Confucianism isn't a religion, but it's a philosophy created to ensure social order and a stable beneficial government. So, it, but it's still, um, Confucius is one of our great thinkers and we have been talking about great thinkers lately and how that power of belief helps to shape our attitude. So we're going to continue to think about, especially this second question on this slide. How do beliefs, and in this instance, Confucianism, influence social and political attitudes? So Confucius, Confucius is considered to be one of the greatest Chinese thinker um, and like Aristotle, Plato and Socrates, he had a huge influence not only on the people that immediately surrounded him and his students, <clears throat> but also on greater China. So he was born in 551 BC to a poor but noble family. Um, Actually, his father died when he was three, so he was brought up primarily by his mother, and he studied hard. And at 15 years old, he decided to spend his life in the pursuit of learning, and he studied classic Chinese works. And he had the philosophy that he would teach anyone, no matter their social or economic status. Now, this was pretty progressive because before this, it was only rich people that would afford tutors and they would um, pay tutors to teach their children. But Confucius believed that every man should have uh, a way to improve his, his um, situation. So he um, talked to different rulers on how to govern. And he became a great teacher and created a philosophy on social order and government. Now, I want to put him a little bit into context. So you have Confucius who actually came first. So we've talked about Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. Confucius comes before them. And in fact, he died nine years before Socrates was born. And you have a difference in location as well. We know that Plato, was Socrates' student, and Aristotle was the student of Plato, and Alexander the Great was the student of Aristotle. But you have Confucius who comes before them, and he is to the east of Greece. So right now, I would like you guys to pause this video, and I want you to go to Canvas, and I want you to watch that video that I posted on the life and background of Confucius so that we can get a little bit of perspective on his background. And while you're watching the video, I want you to consider two questions. First, where does Confucius believe human character is formed? And two, Confucius dissuaded rulers to do what? What did he advise rulers to stay away from? And then resume this video. Okay, so hopefully when you watch that, you saw that Confucius said that and, and counseled leaders that if they relied on harsh punishment and military power 
to govern their their people that that was the wrong way to govern. He thought that the right way to govern was by example and by a good example. Now, I was told you that Confucius was considered to be a great teacher. And in fact, according to legend, Confucius was so successful in spreading joy, courtesy, and kindness that crime appeared to vanish overnight. So that kind of goes to what he was trying to teach leaders, that they shouldn't govern by harsh punishment, but by uh, an example like what Confucius was doing. Because when, when he was around, crime vanished. So Confucius taught that people should conduct, should conduct their lives on two basic principles. Ren, which is concern for others, and Li, which is appropriate behavior. So Ren, some people translate this to mean humanness or, or humaneness and kindness or love. So he believed that everyone should, should conduct their lives with kindness and love, and then um, Li is appropriate behavior, and this is sometimes translated to mean um, social rituals. So Confucius believed that if everybody practiced these two things, that society would be able to function at its best. Continuing on with his teachings, he says that everybody has duties and responsibilities and that these duties depended on where you were within in society. So, for example, a superior was expected to be a role model and care for those beneath them, while an inferior would be expected to show, show loyalty and obedience to those above them. And women were expected to create stability within the home. So, he said that correct behavior equaled stability. And he really focused on the family. The family was a big focus for him. So I really want you to think about how that connects to either your beliefs or to the other uh, great thinkers that we've talked about. So he taught that filial piety, which is like family relationships and loyalty within the family, that this was an important virtue and it was the duty of people within a family to respect, um, obey, and care for parents and ancestors. For example, a child was expected to devote themselves to their parents in their lifetime. So if a parent died, it was up to the children to honor their memory and perform um, specific rituals. So Confucius also taught specifically about five basic relationships that everybody has. He said that there is the, uh, the relationship between ruler and subject, father and son, husband and wife, older brother and younger brother, and friend to friend. So he said that it's only in this last relationship between friends that there was equality between both individuals in the relationship. So for example, an older brother is always gonna be superior to a younger brother, and men were always going to be superior to women. But between friends, there's going to be an equal, an equal relationship there. Confucius taught that a ruler had the responsibility to have a good government. So meaning he believed that rulers should always rule by example. Because remember, if they ruled by example, how Confucius did, he taught by example, he showed that example of kindness and love. And in response, crime diminished when he was there. So he said that that's how it should work with rulers, that if they uh, always ruled by a good example, that you would have good outcomes. Because if he did so, then the people would in turn respect their ruler and you would have diminished crime. 
And he also said that the best ruler was one uh, who was educated as well. And the advisors should always utilize uh, the educated and wise men around him. Now, this is important. And I want you to think right now. I want you to think how this idea of having it be important to have educated rulers is similar or different to the thinking of Plato and Aristotle. Think back to our other discussions. Think back to our discussion on Plato and our discussion of democracy and how Plato uh, believed in democracy, which is the people having that voice and that popular consent. But then I want you to think about how Aristotle believed that you couldn't just have democracy or it would equal mob rule and that you had to have this mixture of aristocracy, which is educated people and democracy, and those two combined make a better government. How is, who is, well, for one, who is Confucius like? Would he be more like Aristotle or would he be more like Plato and why? Well, after thinking about that, he would be more like Aristotle because he did believe that an aristocracy was important. You did have to have leaders who were educated. So now we're gonna take a closer look at just eight of, the, of, of some sayings of Confucius. Remember, his students actually revered him so much that they took his sayings because he didn't write anything down in his lifetime. Uh, his students took his sayings and they collected them into a book. And in English, it's called the Analects of Confucius. So we're going to look at a couple of his sayings and we're going to figure out what the main idea is. So I'm going to do the first one with you. Where you'll find this is if you go to Canvas and you go into the module, for, or the module for this week, you will see an assignment and it's called the Analects of Confucius. And we're gonna look at the very first one. So if you wanna get uh, that open, then we're gonna look at this saying. It says, Confucius said that when you meet someone better than yourself, turn your thoughts to becoming his equal. When you meet someone not as good as you are, look within and examine your own self. So what we wanna to try to do here is we wanna come up with the big idea of this teaching. How are we going to summarize it? I don't need a great big long explanation. I just want you to tell me what that is saying in our real world language, okay? So if I look at this quote and I'm trying to come up with a big idea, I'm gonna say that it's basically saying that we should always try to be the best, best version of ourself. And we can do this by reflecting and following the examples of others. So that's my one sentence summary. It's saying that when I meet someone that's better than me, instead of just saying that person is amazing and then not changing myself, I should try to be just as good. I should take something that I think is awesome about them and I should incorporate it into myself. And when I meet someone that isn't as, as good as I am in some area, that instead of just being like, yeah, I rock, I should constantly re-examine how can I be better? So my big idea for this one, how I would summarize it in one sentence is, always strive to be the best version of yourself through self-reflection and following the examples of others. So you are gonna finish that assignment. You have seven more uh, teachings of Confucius that you're going to look at and come up with a big idea for, a, just a one sentence summary of what it's saying. And then you're going to come up with your own moral saying. And you're gonna give me a brief ex explanation of the main idea, okay? And that is it. If you have any questions, please contact me, email me, video conference me over Teams. I can help you through your assignment. Uh, we can, we'll talk about it in our next Teams class meeting. 
and discuss anything that you guys struggled with or anything that you want to talk about. Um, but I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about Confucius and some of the things that he taught. See you guys next time.